we're literally telling people how to win the game, and they're out here just like, no, I'm going to take Curse Bullet Greymane. But we find ourselves here, <laughs> game number three on Battlefield of Eternity. The members of Towers down in our best of five series with keeps up 2-0 against them. And this will be a Greymane first ban. Now, they banning it out so they can't pick it, Baja. That's why. <laughs> that was... Now, we have to, because, you know, there's, there's, there's only so many ban slots. So, obviously, I think there's going to be teams playing for the Savannah's ban, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I think Towers is going to try and force Keeps into giving giving over said Sylvanas. We'll see if that's going to be the case here. But I mean, she's such she's such an impactful here, and I and I honestly don't expect it to come. Like I don't I wouldn't let it through just because of I'd the probably shutdown. see a Sylv ban here. Yeah, yeah. Like I I would I would expect them to ban out the Sylvanas unless they're just like sitting there and like there are some players out there who are like, oh no, like yes, she does have those powers, but like in my opinion, we take this and we can counter it. Like, it's not going to be that big of a deal for us. But they're they're cons they're considering it here on the side of Keats. They're they're thinking this ban through. Will be the Ana. Okay, let's see what we get her first pick. Got to be a snap, Sylv. I, I, I expect it, but... They're considering. They're tanking. Rainer? Do we argue for Rainer instead of Sylv? He's yeah, good, Rainer. man, dude. That... Uh... Okay, this is wait. The, this is the other. This is the other thing I was waiting. I was gonna mention as well. And and I'm now not they the just get Rainer Silv, right? Do we just take Rainer Silv and we're sad? I mean, if you want to, and if you want to mess them up a little bit further, you can take. You could take Silv etc because that gets rid of the the power sledge. Yeah, you true. Know, setup with Li Ming because that's what it kind of looks like they're going for. Maybe they just like swap like a, a Maev instead in for in for a Greyman or so you know something that can still mm -hmm. dive in with the etc. So I we'll, we'll see what this is gonna be, but like. I agree with you. Rainer Sylvanas would be amazing here. Oh, there's your ATC. Yeah. yeah. So on on online with that and maybe taking the Rainer to set them up for like a Sylv Lee Ming, which is kind of like not really where you want to be at, right? The damage numbers yeah. there, they're good, but it's like... It's not as synergistic. You're, 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 yeah, like for me, this is where I think Tassadar would be very good, um, actually, because for some reason, this is a poke map. And Tassadar mm -hmm. is really good at poking, right? Especially new Tass. Um, so I could see, I could oh. see a Tass pick up. But Lucio's <laughs> Lucio Garrosh is good too, right? Yeah, walk, walk in the Garrosh right there. Indomitable yeah. speed boost. You can throw whoever. Um, someone was asking in chat. I just saw this. No more Vala one build on Boe. Um, Hungering Arrow build is definitely, or Puncturing Arrow Monster Hunter, whatever, whatever you want to call it, um, is definitely still viable on this map. I just think it's one of those things that it's just like. You know, like Rainer, Hanzo, Greymane, they're all like up there, and Vala's just like secondary. It's like, all right, well, we can't get the main racers. Let's so at do least then grab the Vala. Yeah. Or it's a comfort thing too. Like I've seen in like lower divisions of play, people take the Vala because they're just they're like, this is what I practice. I can't mm -hmm. play Greymane. I'm not a very good Rainer, or maybe it's banned out or something like that. So um Vala definitely still has viability on this map. I mean, Lunara still has a ton of viability. It's just it's just who feels comfortable, who wants to play what. Um Band wise though, um, they are going to need something on the support wise on the right hand side. Stukov isn't a bad band, but it's actually going to be a Rhaegar. I like that a lot. To actually, the, the bloodlust blood on this map is massive, right? Yep. Yeah. This is a map where like you can just hit bloodlust and be like, win objective. You know, it's like that in itself. You want to get that away. Not only that, but you know, they can just run your team over again. Again, mm -hmm. like Garrosh is lumbering. Um, yeah. Sure, the Lucio helps a lot, right? That, that I would say, like Lucio Grosh is very annoying um, for that case because you you take away that lumberingness. But uh, yeah, getting rid of the bloodlust is very good, and and I, I like the Ural White Man. White Man, I'm not you, I'm not super sold on it as a as a player. Uh, I've seen good White Man players flex mm -hmm. her really hard and play her well, uh, but I would have me personally honestly... not a massive White Man fan. I like my supports to have some form of cc right um, i was gonna say like keeps right here the co the composition they have is very control based with the etc and url power slide face meld righteous hammer all that kind of stuff you know giving shields to, to friendly members i kind of actually would have leaned into an ariel i think it would have paired well with the rainer to build okay. up a little bit more hope you have the detainment strike if garrosh tries to step up or lucio you know like you have some sort of control like white main she feels very exposed, especially with a Chen kicking in, Hanzo scatter arrows, Li Ming. Like, it's just like this white main I'm, I'm a little worried for right here. They're going to need some extra... Go ahead. I was I was just going to agree. Uh, I mean, yeah. white main is like, she needs help. And maybe this is the this is just the resolution to picking a very weak support is just jam a Kerrigan beside of that character and then just have her counter engage. So if we do get to a point where they all in... Then Kerrigan will be there to counter engage. I personally don't like Kerrigan at all here. Um, 
unless we're looking for like fog of war combos or you know potentially chain ccs off of etc but i think between like the barrel the arrow to stop the engage the wave of uh the boops the boops are going to be really frustrating <laughs> and annoying um you know unlike game one on towers we have a lot of utility that can protect this garage on the all-ins yeah. right we're not just gonna have them hit all of their buttons like they did game one and just one shot him instead we should hopefully see some protection for him um but i mean who knows tiger could prove me wrong and just like just be clapping out combos left and right and dominating That's, but i do think yeah. he's just gonna i do think he's gonna play back he's gonna be a support character this game and his job is not gonna be to be that playmaker godlike combos left and right instead passive uh kind of you know really calculated on when he does throw combos at this enemy team but we are going to be jumping into game number three it is going to be on battlefield of eternity team towers down zero to two uh, for team keeps and looking at team towers we do have kelsier is going to be playing the hanzo weary day on the lucio chijuggy gonna be rocking that garage on the train got filth playing the Lee Ming, and i believe up in the top lane we have funds on the chin on the right hand side, we got the members of Keeps up 2 0. We got Valimar on the URL moving on through middle of the map. It's going to be Tiger JK on that Kerrigan. And then all the way in the bottom lane, we're going to be seeing Pirate Rum on the Rainer, Lupus on the ETC, and Porky will be on the URL. Not correct at all. On the Sally White main, my brain. Anyways, <laughs> I want. I was actually looking at URL's level one because I was curious. I was like, yeah, of course, it's going to be Dauntless. Um, Please be Garrosh. Dauntless. <laughs> <laughs> Garrosh is going to be going into the uh, into the body check at level one, so they're going to be uh, picking that one up again. No no warlords challenge for them to be able to get cooldown reduction, also damage over time onto that. Um, but it's I would say it's pretty standard across the board when it comes to our level ones here. I think body check is a little bit sleeper versus the ETC as well. Um, he sustains like an absurd amount just from his built-in E. So being able to like just body check that and kind of slow that self-sustain down outside of the fact that obviously it's going to hit white mains as well. It's just really good. I would sell the ETC is strong because of the armor that he always has, right? Mm -hmm. Like, he's just got 25 armor constantly. And I think people kind of figured that out. Uh, but we do see a little scrap here. Lupus's slide is going to be down. Tiger takes a big oh orb. God. Looking for a combo, but Weary Day just oh actually left to riding him. Kerrigan's nightmare. Alucio just skating around in random okay. directions. I got flashbacks from Sunday again uh, for the EU. It was Banana was playing Lucio in one of the games, and I think it was Sky Temple, and they were doing harassment like that the <laughs> entire game. And it was the most it was the most wild thing to cast because I was never I've never seen a Lucio be that like that difficult, that slippery, that an, that much of a nuisance. Like it was it was the most harassment I've actually seen. But it it makes sense. Like Banana's like probably one of the best EU. Uh, no, no, it's Monkey who's, who plays the most Samur out there. But I believe Banana plays that as well. And just like harassment wise, it just it felt very Samuro in a sense. It was just like you can't catch me, and I'm just constantly uh -huh. being elusive. Um, as Chuchuggy is going to be stepping up here, not able to find a toss at all. Tiger JK just going to ravage out a little bit into the minion wave, but not too aggressive right now as we are going to be having a slight experience advantage on the side of Towers as they will have that first kill in their favor. I also want to shout out Enlu. Thank you so much for the host. Welcome everyone to our in-house league. Um, but yeah, we, we do see funds actually... Chin may be one of the few characters that can handle URL in the sense of he does a good amount of spell damage, right? So that, mm -hmm. that physical talent at level 1 not getting as much value in the matchup uh and then matthiel's pick for the same reason but tiger being really patient here i hope funds doesn't come off of his mount um also doesn't get caught by this url i'm assuming he sniffed this out you don't there see kerrigan be. on the mount but i guess yeah. technically they don't need kerrigan for the hard camp either oh he's doing that thing where people just oh oh my god these just walk away funds. I love the slight little drink right there, and then they just <laughs> continue to keep going. Toss comes out from Garage to Chuggy and friends managed to rotate up here. Pirate Rum in a bit of a bad spot, trying to make their way out of here. Managed to do so. No one going down in that engagement. The uh, Shaman camps were grabbed by both teams. Those will be entering the top and bottom lane. Chen going to be staying in the top lane to clear that out. This looks like it's going to be Race coming out. That was a big old combo from Got Phil. And Pirate getting a little bit low here. Needs to get some of that healing from Porky. You can see that zeal mark onto them. But right now, I think it's just them playing a little defensive as we have lane management coming out. Toss comes out onto Lupus. Are they going to be able to get out of here? Yeah, they'll be able to power slide out. This game is like really reminiscent of the first with the Chijuggy pick on Garrosh. Because every time he gets a good throw, there's no follow-up CC. It. Um, that was exactly how game one was. Uh, mm -hmm. So not being able to lock the ETC down for long enough for his team to kill, even though they have big damage, 
I, I, I see being a problem again this game. Uh, maybe when Taunt comes online, they can start one-shotting like they were doing in game one, but it is going to be an issue here, especially pre-10. But this is where the poke happens, where the Li Ming yeah, magic, Li the Hanzo. Hanzo. Yeah. This is where the Tassadar magic, you know what I'm saying? Baja would have been really sick. Just storming only... and queuing over and mm -hmm. over from the safe side of the hard camp that can't be blocked like these orbs can, you know, whatever. I don't know anything, but combo is going to connect onto Juggy. Porky doing his best to get out some heals here too. Volmar charging up the hammer, whacking that chins away. Looks like Lupus sliding in though aggressively. Again, using that heroic ability. And it is going to be a reset for Ming. Not seven yet, no calamity. Able to pick up two kills. Yeah, ETC using his heroic there a little early, sliding in aggressively. Uh, taking out, you know, again, his slide is his heroic after all. Um, mm -hmm. The biggest, <laughs> it's not, the, it's biggest the, bit. the biggest <laughs> button on his keyboard. Yeah, the one that says, yeah. I use this and die or I use this and live. Uh, mm -hmm. He's opted into to die. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be a double kill and an objective. Fairly healthy too. I, I would assume that we lose half of a fort. Again, we, we really, I can, we've been casting, but like, have we noticed anything about the towers or are the team's just doing a really good job of being like, do not hit them. Like it really, it really depends because I've actually I've seen some teams purposely play into the enemy side so that way splash damage. Like for example, if the enemy team had a Joanna, typically Joanna likes to step in with the condemn. They yeah. were playing into that, trying to force themselves to get caught out by the condemn. It's it's the same thing. Like I was, I keep relating a lot of this back to League, but there are very much those mechanics in here. When you're playing around your towers, you want to force the enemy member. If they have an AOE, if they have some sort of you know splash damage tool, like maybe a flame strike, you want to mm -hmm. almost even tank that damage if you can. That way the towers focus on to said hero oh the toss goes out into the fray but there's just so much toss on the Valmar <laughs> that just they'll be going down but just like there's there's a whole mechanic around at this point i think teams and players are trying to are figuring that out like mm -hmm. you can use the towers in a more defensive manner because you can purposely take a little bit of damage from the enemy team and then those towers will force uh targeting onto them and that will zone back the enemy side um speaking of the enemy side we're actually seeing them turning around top lane trying to open this up a little bit for themselves here while they do have this impaler camp but still four kills to zero will yield them a solid experience excuse me a solid level lead over the side of keeps on the side of towers lupus there with a little slide air ball probably work for that top well i would assume that team towers does um that side wall too, just get rid of that. Godfield, you know, as Li Ming, you just should be chipping. You're just mm -hmm. constantly chipping, constantly harassing. Chujuggy doing a good job. He just needs to play, he needs to play Ward right now. Look at the flank. He doesn't play Ward very well. Weary Day is gonna get comboed a nice into the freight to get his friend away. But Chujuggy, is he caught out of position? Getting the zoomies there from Lucio, the boop away, is it gonna be enough? The rundown the chase should be enough here. Oh. Yeah, power slide came out from ETC at the last second. I was like, I know that they've got that right, right in their pocket. That doesn't yield them, you know, the the level that they need, but at least it buys them a little bit of time. Immortals will be spawning here in eight seconds, gets them in position for that. They could go for their camp on the right hand side if they want to do so. Uh, right before we get into this, I do want to just catch everyone up on some of the questing talents. Hanzo is at 16 out of 20 on simple geometry. And actually, I just realized that's it. That's all of them. <laughs> I, I thought there was way more as I, I glanced around. I was like, wait, no, that's that's literally it. That's all I have to update you on. Um, Garrish now rejoining the friendly team. But 10 talents here will be here in favor for towers. And they do have that keg W to uh, interrupt a lot. Oh. Um, I, oh. People were asking why Chen, but it's 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 disruption. It's the, the, the actual backline dive he provides as well as even then like enough to share it 13 is a huge talent just to be able to get some armor onto the friendly members around you while you while you drink up it's just he, he's got good harassment self-sustain he's able to tank damage he's just a good hero overall and he's not super mono dependent because well he can just refill that by just drinking out of his jug immortal though over to the side of towers maybe a hard indeed not going to take it here and it's going to be on the bottom side right the damage has been dealt to yep. the top it's going to the weaker side of the map Mm -hmm. I don't believe there are towers here. Yeah, there aren't. So we should hopefully see a fort. Again, this is where we might get to see that 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 fort come into action, um, come alive, deal some damage. Valmar on the flank, deep flank here. Just going to jump in and try to create some pressure. Buy some space for Pyre to do massive Tiger. damage. Tiger, Tiger as well. Combo connects. Storm. They have a Warlord challenge as well from Jachuggy. Sound barrier is used by the Lucio as well. They actually keep the Garrosh alive. The Immortal still pushing in. We'll be on the fort right there. And McIntyre, I think they managed to stave off the fight, but that that sound barrier was exactly what they needed. Yeah, just gumming that entire engage. Uh, the boop away from Lucio. Nice into the fray as well from that Garrosh to save the Li Ming. Um, 
overall really good executed 4v5 mind you chin mm -hmm. just standing in the top lane um not really Jason, sure panda. Panda. yeah i guess we're just trying to get xp here um respectful afk position as well um <laughs> You know, realizing the other team is going to be rotating around the map. He doesn't see them. Something that solo laners should do more often. Just be staring at the map. A lot of the existence of you standing in the lane should be spent there, right? Let your team know where the, where, where you think they are. Um, you don't even have to know where they are. But if they're not showing in the bottom lane, you should know that. You should recognize that. And you should be kind of... Maybe they're on hards. Maybe they're rotating to gank my lane. Maybe they're still hidden in the bottom lane, right? These are the things that I think solo laners should do more often as the lane in most cases is very slow right yeah uh, you should be you should be sitting there communicating what you see on the minimap because it's free information everyone it's not like it's not like Li Ming sees something differently than chen but uh -huh. as a player got filth might not be focusing onto said minimap they might be focusing on to maybe getting a combo so yep. absolutely that is definitely something in communication in comms um it's very very valuable to have because as you said like right now this chen is just autoing into a wave like yeah they are a stepping and stuff like that but i'm your a moving however you want to call it but they definitely have that availability to be able to see like all right they're they're they just left bottom lane i don't know where they are and you can actually see that might have been communicated right there as they kind of backed off from that camp no 13 talents here on either side chen actually rotating down from top lane there is still a camp pushing in up here very low but they just want to make sure that they're not invaded here and it becomes a 4v5 in favor of the members of keeps and now funds just needs to be respectful again here of the rotation to the top but it does look like a first 50 race um, as we noted, Rainer does do a lot of damage. Um, might be able to outrace them here. Going to be a little bit behind, but oh, fairly even. Um, actually, a nice throw there from Chijuggy onto Lupus. Just disengaged. They want to reset the fight, wait for the spawns, yeah. potentially. And we defensive. have defensive, which is going to be great for the Ming side, right? A lot of poke. Oh. Oh, I thought Lupus got caught out there, but they managed to get away from that one. That was that was close. Now, you can see that that kind of AoE around Chen. That's that enough to share that I kept talking about. Wandering Keg coming out. They're going to try and split the enemy members in the back line towards the front side. Pirate is going to be that target exactly. They managed to get the boob, and there's the value from Chen that we were talking about. ETC is going to have the Moshpits interrupted, by the way, before so there's a sound barrier from the Lucio. There was an arrow from Hanzo as well. Whole lot of damage coming out as White Mane will use her ultimate to try and help some friendly members around them. Lupus getting very low. Ural jumps out. That's going to be Hanzo going down. Lupus is going to go down, and it's a reset for Li Ming as well. They now try and turn in on to Tiger, who does pop into their Chrysalis. Got Philp getting very low. Weary Day chasing after them to make sure they stay alive. Shuggy very low as well. This Immortal is starting to lose a lot of its health. Oh, Porky's going to get dove on by Weary Day, and that's going to be a bit of a split fight as that will be Kerrigan going down. White Man going down. All that stuff is Valmar. He's trying to get away here with their 50 armor. Another sound wave from Lucio, but a nice use of the Righteous Amber forces them away. They get the Immortal and only lose out three. So you've been hyping enough to share and i just saw enough to share save leeming leeming took a hammer from urel as he went to drink and the shield from his drink saves the ming enough that she can blink away but like without it he was dead like yeah that was and that was that was in the other game too when when like chen would just drink and there'd be look, so many it's happening right like, now they should have died yeah look at all, all the shields damage. it's like a aoe tash shield Every time you drink. What? Have I just been enough sleeping on this talent too? <laughs> yeah, this is and like... And Enough to Share has been around for a long time I too. So. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> but has Enough to Share always lasted like six seconds? Uh, that part I don't remember. I, I, Cause if I, I feel remember like, correctly, I feel like it used 16? to just... I feel like it used to just drink and give shields as long as you were drinking. But now it's like, it's as if he's giving a task shield to everything around him. Like, I, I say this as someone who used to play when Tass had pre-shields as a level four <laughs> talent, where you would shield everyone before you go into a fight, just oh so they God, would have that. a little extra shield. Yeah. The Immortal just gummed up here. They're just <laughs> afraid. They, they don't really want to push in here with a without 16. It's a it's a respectful play. Um, no, I, I like this a lot. I just looked, I looked over at chat and we're talking about Tash shields and just the first question in chat yeah. is just, what's a Tash shield? And it's I like, know. well, true. There's no such thing anymore. 
Tassel are used to be able to s s uh, shield targets, as that's gonna be a wandering keg to zone back the enemy team. Warlord challenge on the ETC. They managed to split the fight with that wandering keg. Porky now finds himself on the on the far side of his fight. Kerrigan dives in with the millstorm. Huge Ahanzo arrow as well. Sound barrier used by the Lucio is now Tiger JK is gonna be on the wrong side of this fight. They will go down, chasing in further reset after reset for Got Filth. Valmar trying to get out of here. That's gonna be Got Filth actually thrown in. They blink on top of them, and Valmar goes down. Pirate over here. There should be a kick from Chen. Gonna find the kill right there. All five members go down wiped and that will be a top lane keep going down they could look to push to end game i would actually agree with funds a serious keg w there uh seriously just a zone oh that's oh, a keg w oh, oh, <laughs> turns out no please stop trying to court leave oh no turns out that <laughs> the keeps do damage now if you just let them hit you even if you're garage i uh good patch according to the players uh, that are playing here tonight. But I mean, hey, if, if, if that just stopped the enemy team from ending the game, good patch for you. Absolutely. <laughs> it's a good patch for keeps. Uh, Immortal Face will be coming out here <laughs> on the left-hand side. Uh, I think I honestly think that they're going to Towers should have a little bit more control over this. They do have still 16 talents here over the enemy side, and they could mm -hmm. kind of flex into them with that advantage. Even 4v5, I don't think it's terrible. I like this heads-up play from Valmar, though. Oh, I do not like that from funds. Potentially. Oh, oh, the turnaround. That was. Ooh. Oh. No way. No way. No. There's no Staggering. way. There's no way. Pacify. Reduce. The, everything is no, here. Sound barrier from here. Lucio. Wait. Sound barrier on the far side of this. They have the speed boost. Garrosh comes in. Into throws the them away. Chuggy does not live through this. They get the Warlord challenge. They throw them away. They kick back in with Chen. There's going to be a, a mosh pit out from ETC. They jump on top of Garrosh's head. They find the kill right there. Fun's trying to back out of here. Porky very low, no got filled, is not in a good spot as they're going to get picked off as well. Weary Day just goes ahead and <laughs> uses the push off, finds the kill, wall rides right out there, oh also drops arrow. Dear Lord McIntyre, that was just... What did I just watch? What? Yeah, the Immortal was up that whole time. All of that started because we decided to keg W for an easy camp. Just think about that for a second. What a and maddening, players. maddening... We wave a force. It's, it's only 50 second cooldown. I guess so. It's already back up. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, it's a pretty good talent. He will have it for this next fight. A big, a big, I will say a, a massive, not even just big, massive, is that keg is up when the engage happens. Because that mm -hmm. last fight went so well for them. Because on the engage, on the ETC, he was able to barrel away all of the backup, right? And we talked about it at the beginning. Kerrigan's there as a backup. She's as a, she's there as a support. When somebody's under heat, as you see, Lupus what? already under heat. Able to it's get away, split, though. It was, it was a little early there. I don't think yeah, they had was, all the tools in place. Fun saw an opportunity and tried to pull the ETC away from the friendly team. It did not work out for them. And now both teams are up. They've got consistent catapult pressure through top lane. So on the side of towers, they can play this slow and let that top lane push in and keep them from backing. But right now they're all in for this immortal phase as the second phase is already triggered. And it's not like it's gonna it's gonna swap off right now. They can go all in as this is a lot of damage from Weary Day. That's gonna be a uh, heroic from Porky. They find one blow up onto White Mane immediately. Lupus is on the far side of this. Lucio goes down. A one for one trade. Healer for healer. Immortal Face should go over to the side of Keeps. Hanzo and friends looking to find a kill over here as Rum, excuse me, Pirate Rum is able to get the penetrating round into funds, forcing them back. Garrosh does go down below us, but they trade out the URL for that. Yeah, Weary Day just kind of got blended up there. Uh, mm -hmm. Went in to help help out the team and I think either an ETC or maybe it could have been even an ETC W something caught a CC caught the Lucio and before you could basically press any button he was just dead um but overall really I, I like the engage there uh from the side of keeps to kind of recognize that losing an immortal at this stage in the game is kind of would almost be the end of the game right so to then yeah. commit to the fact that you'll might lose out on a lot of players but get the objective i think it's the correct play there right they even they just hit ultimates and, and went for it um so i like that a lot i like that play from that decision and shot call to keep themselves in the game and now potentially getting to level 20 before the next immortal phase right
If they can grab that 20, they can use that pressure in their favor, but the members of Keeps are not trying. They, they have found some momentum in their favor, and this mm -hmm. feels like the previous two games. They get a little bit of this, you know, they get a couple kills. They start to just, you know, run it down. They get, you know, fight after fight in their favor. But here's the thing. Urel is showing in bottom lane, so they're going to try and take advantage of that. That's going to be Wandering Keg. Porky's going to be split. That's a Hanzo arrow out as well that locks down one, but it's just kind of a lot of tools being used. No kills just yet as Porky might go down. They're still healing. Through all of that, they end up going down right there. There's a reset for Li Ming. Gonna throw a combo out. Lupus taking a lot of that damage. Pirate trying to get some damage in the back line. It looks like they managed to get the one kill. They're gonna back off, clear the waves, and take advantage. No, actually, no, maybe they push in through bottom lane with this. They got I'd 20s. Probably take the hard camp and then go to the bottom lane. Yeah, you got uh, enough to share. You can just slow push in. Repulsion as well for the pick potential. And like you said, the barrel cooldown is so low. He's almost gotta back up. They need to look for more. They need to look for more. The white man kill was a lot. But they need more. Um, be it damage on this keep, uh, maybe clearing that top wave. I, I don't know that the top wave on their side might deal some damage to the wall, actually, to the keep wall. But I like this a lot. You can see the Chin just drinking, giving shields. They need to be aggressive here. It's impossible for their team to fight them. Yeah, so the other thing, too, is there are, there is going to be consistent catapult pressure in this top lane. Yeah, so this will true. actually help out a ton. And we are nearing 20 minutes. These catapults are hitting for 377 in auto, so they definitely do a lot of damage. Immediate race, though, coming out onto this left-hand side, and they should be able to burn this down to the halfway point. Yeah. And it, realistically, I mean, without 20 talents here, you can see them. They're just they're turtling up, waiting for waves to come to them. They either have to take a talent tier fight, talent tier down fight like we have seen in some of the previous weeks or they just have to eat this immortal and try and play for the defense i think they i think they just played defensive 5v5 it's not impossible without the 20 absolutely they have win conditions the chin being unsolvable is, is kind of annoying especially with this mean throwing uh mm -hmm. orbs but you do see kerrigan pushing into the bottom lane trying to force the 20 you know maybe a 20 bolt of the swarm coming out for Kerrigan, able to get her onto the back line or get where she needs to be in these fights valmar doing a good job too to just pressure out funds Kind of bring some heat. They can't just let them overrun them. As you see, they're kind of spacing them to do, right? This means constantly magic missile, magic missile, magic oh. missile. Kerrigan potentially caught out, but she has 20. The bolt is taken. Ice block immediately. A fight is going to break out here. Chijogi taking on a massive amount of damage. A nice Hanzo arrow is going to connect. It looks like Barrel trying to knock people around. Lupus still has his mosh pit up. He is looking for it. Unstoppable on the chin. Is it going to be enough to get him out? He's staggered out of his mind. So much damage. He does go down. Valmar is going to hit his ultimate unstoppable there coming out too. And there you go. I mean, just like that. While it was a 2020 fight, it looked like Kerrigan was caught out of position. A great engage there. Probably some ult, it, early, early ults, I would say. I would say that sound barrier was used a little was, early. I'll say this. The Kerrigan actually played that really well with the Bolt of the Storm and the Chrysalis and everything. Just to kind of... It almost seemed like a bait the entire time. Like, we're going to pull them down here and we're going to fight them down in the lane. And just kind of in a more open area so Chen doesn't get those those keg values to be able to kind of knock us in through the tunnels. But that's a lot of damage to the Tiger who doesn't end up going down. Mashpit comes out from ETC. They don't find anyone with that one. It's going to be stopped immediately. As Gottfeld the split from the team, they will actually go down to the Kerrigan. But they do still find a two-for-two two trade in across the board because Chen got picked off earlier anyways. Um, but still, it's it's 3v3 at this point. Healers and, I mean, I guess tanks in a sense. Valimar is tanking a bit here. All Hanzo needs to do is just go up and auto the Immortal, guys. Just go auto the Immortal. What are we doing? Why are we... Baja, what's happening? What am I watching my monitor? Can somebody uh... please auto? Why are we hitting scattered? Kill Porky. That's a dead Porky. This is... Oh, whoa, whoa, wait. I've spoke too soon. Urel's got control here. Like, what is Righteous Hammer? We have a Lucio. We have a e Lucio, Baha. There's no Righteous Hammer value. It's a damn Lucio. There's no buildings. <laughs> Just run Porky down, body block him in a conga line. It should. Be... We do have the, the the objective has been picked up here from the side of towers, and it is a heavy chance that we can win here, right? The, the core is already at 65% from the catapults during that time period. But good damage coming out from Pyro Realm. If they don't stop him from autoing this mortal, it might not be enough here. A fight is going to break out. Lupus looking as well. Find a slide angle here is on the funds. He is going to stun him up there. A knockback from Valimar as well. And you can see Rainers is doing his best to push out that immortal damage. Juggy with a nice taunt. Combo going to connect onto the Tiger. The arrow connects as well. The barrel knocking people around. Tiger's just doing his best to pressure the back line as much as possible. Godfield's taking so much damage. Tiger still alive, but 
The Punisher has fallen, and we've now called for an all-in on court. The only two people that have showed up is Lucio and Chin. Is it going to be enough? Jujuggy doing his best. Goth build over there in the back line. 3%, 2%, 1. And it is going to be a victory here coming out from the side of Team Towers on Battlefield of Attorney. Going, uh, taking us into game four, I guess. They go up in the series. Some interesting plays, to say the least, from our teams here. Reverse sweep, let's go. <laughs> it's possible. It is very, Crazier very possible. Things have happened. And we see, yeah, the, 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 the level lead, while it didn't assist in the overall win of the game, um, it did help them. They had an advantage enough that the catapults pressuring in the top lane when they had taken that top keep allowed for, you know, that core damage. That 35 core damage was not a joke. Like, the shield kind of barely being existent on the core was not a joke on that all-in. Because that all-in was I, fairly sloppy. And they cored... They squeezed it out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, this they, was... They, they eked it out. It, it, yeah. As my dad would say, like... The one thing I want to point out is the Immortal was dealing 1,065 damage in auto at that point <laughs> in the game. I was watching it hit the core. It hit the core for anywhere from 9 to 12% in auto. <laughs> That immortal chunked from like it did like five autos into the core and it went from sixty-five to like thirty. It was ridiculous. 